Hello and welcome to the first section of Volume 2, Building and Optimising the Desktop Operating System. In this first section, we are going to build a Windows 7 Virtual Desktop Machine. So what are you going to learn in this first section? We are going to start by creating a Windows 7 Virtual Desktop in vCenter. Once created, we will then install the Windows 7 Operating System and then optimise it. In the final part of this section, we are going to prepare the Virtual Desktop Machine for delivery to the end users. So let's get started and build the virtual desktop. To build the desktop, there are several steps to complete. First of all, you need to create the virtual desktop machine in vCenter. Once the virtual machine has been created, you need to configure the virtual hardware to reflect the fact that the desktop is running as a virtual machine. This also includes configuring the virtual machine BIOS. Once these steps have been completed, then we can move ahead and install the Windows 7 operating system and then the VMware tool software so that we are running the correct drivers and tools for a virtual desktop machine. There are a number of different ways to build desktop operating systems. If you take a physical desktop environment, for example, there are a number of ways in which the operating system can be built and deployed. For example, you could use the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, or MDT, or maybe the Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager, SCCM. Both of these options can be used along with all the other tools available to build desktop images, including VMware's own Mirage product, of course. So we just talked about a couple of options that you can use to build your desktop images, but let's just highlight the one that you should not use, and that's a physical to virtual tool, or P2V, which effectively turns your physical image into a virtual one. Best practice is to build a new virtual desktop image from scratch, so it starts off life as being designed to be a virtual machine from day one. After all, you would potentially build a new image for a new hardware platform, and that's what you're doing in reality. There are a few reasons for not using your physical image to create your virtual desktop image. One of the reasons is the size of the image, which more than likely will have become bloated with numerous patches and updates being applied over the last year or so. You want your VDI image to be lean and fresh with just the most recent and relevant software installed. Another reason is that there may be some hardware drivers or other hardware based software elements within the image, such as a desktop hardware management solution, such as Intel Active Management Technology or AMT which relies on firmware and other components built into the chipset of the physical machine. As you are now using a virtual desktop machine, this type of hardware is not present and therefore you do not require it. Before we get on with the build process, we need to look at the specifications of the virtual desktop machine from a hardware perspective and what we need to configure it. For our example vir lab virtual desktop machine, we are going to configure it with two virtual CPUs. A single CPU may be sufficient for lighter work. This is where your assessment data will be useful. The network card should be configured to use the VMware VMX Net3 network driver. We're going to configure 4 gig of memory as we're going to be installing a 64-bit operating system. Set the SCSI controller to LSI Logic SAS and leave the hard disk size as the default size. There is no need to configure the graphics card as any settings will be overridden by the desktop pool settings. The optical drive should be set to client device so that you are able to mount ISO images to the virtual desktop machines. The diskette drive should be set to disabled in the virtual machine BIOS, as should the parallel and serial ports. Another important factor when configuring the size of the hardware is not to fall into the trap of oversizing your virtual desktop machines. For example, if you only need one CPU, then only give the virtual desktop machine one CPU. As previously mentioned, this is why your assessment data is critical. So now it's time to build the virtual desktop image. So here we've already logged into our vCenter server using the vSphere web client. And in our data center, we have a folder called Windows Images into which we're going to build the virtual desktop machine, Golden Images. So let's get on and build the machine. So let's right click on the Windows Images folder and then select the option for New Virtual Machine. Now we'll see the new virtual machine dialog box pop up. We want to select the option for create a new virtual machine and then click the next button. So the first thing we need to do is give this virtual machine a name. So we're going to call this Windows 7 Gold Image. So we know which one this is. And we're going to, as I said, store in the Windows Images folder. So click the next button to continue. Now we need to select the host that's going to host this desktop. So we select our ESX server from the list and click next. Next we need to choose the storage location of where this virtual machine is going to live. So on this one we're just going to put this on local data store as this is the gold image. 
and click next. Then we need to check our compatibility levels. So as we're running ESX i6 in the example lab, we'll leave that as the default, but you need to select from the list uh, the version of ESX to reflect your particular environment. And then click the next button. So now we need to select the guest OS. So this is what operating system our desktop is going to be running. So obviously it's going to be a, a Windows desktop. And then we need to choose from the list Windows 7 64-bit. As that's the OS we're going to install. And then click the next button. So now we have the customized hardware window where we can change the actual hardware configuration of the virtual desktop. So the first thing we're going to change is we're going to change the virtual CPUs to two. We'll leave the memory the same and the hard disk the same, uh, and also the SCSI controller. So what we need to do next is expand the network option. And under the adapter type, we need to change that from the E1000 to the VMX Net 3 network adapter. If we scroll down, the next thing we want to do is under new CD drive. Again, expand the image for, for that. Uh, and if we select the data store ISO file option, and that brings up the select file dialog box. So from here, if we expand our local data store and then scroll down to our ISO images folder, and we can see we have our ISO images already stored in this ISO images folder on the ESX host server. So select Windows 7 from the list and click OK. And then also make sure that this is connected. So we need to tick the box for connect at power on to ensure that the drive is connected when the virtual machine powers on. The other thing we'll change is we'll change the video card to auto detect settings. Um, what's going to happen anyway when we create a desktop pool, any pool settings will override the video card settings. So that's it for the VMware virtual hardware. So the other thing we're going to change is in VM options. So click VM options from the top. From the left hand side, scroll down to boot options and expand the option for boot options. And then check the box for force BIOS setup. So what happens when the virtual machine boots, this time being the first time, it will start in the BIOS screen. As we need to make a few more changes in the BIOS of the virtual machine. When you're happy with those selections, click Next, and then you see the Ready to Complete button. So here we can see a list of all the settings and configuration changes we've made, and if you're happy with those, click the Finish button to accept. And you'll see in the recent tasks down at the bottom of our vSphere web client, we can see that the virtual machine has now been created. So if we go back up to our uh, inventory on the left-hand side, and if we select our Windows 7 Gold image, and then if we power that on, so that's now powering on, and then next thing we'll do is we'll open a console. And as you can see, because we selected the option for the BIOS, the machine has booted straight into the BIOS screen, where we're going to make a few changes. The first change being, let's change the legacy diskette to disabled. And the reason we do this is with diskettes and CD drives in a physical machine, they can detect when you place a disk or floppy drive or CD drive into the machine. In a virtual machine, it doesn't know because there's no hardware, so it continually polls the device, if it's connected, to see if you've put a disk in there, which basically generates noise, which we don't want in a VM. We want this as lean as possible. So we've disabled our legacy diskette drive. Now if we use our cursor keys and move to the right to the advanced section and then use the down arrow cursor to IO device configuration, press return and then we want to disable our serial port A. So again press return, use cursor up for disabled and press return to accept. And do that on serial port B, on the parallel port and again on the floppy disk controller. Once you've completed that, if you press the escape key, then using the right arrow all the way to exit, and then exit, save changes, and then select yes. Now the virtual machine is going to attach the Windows 7 ISO image, and it's going to boot Windows 7 and start the installation process. So here we can see Windows is starting up, and very shortly we will see the uh, installation screen for our Windows desktop operating system. 
We're not going to walk through the whole of the desktop operating system installation process uh, as this takes uh, quite a long time. So what we will do is we will continue the, the build and then come back to the next stage uh, where we will install VMware tools. So now we have our Windows 7 Gold Image Virtual Desktop Machine already built. You can see here from the vSphere web client view that the machine is up and running, is powered on, and how much CPU, memory and storage has been used. As part of the installation we also installed some of the applications that everybody's going to get as part of their virtual desktop, including security patches and updates, and we also joined the machine to the domain. So the reason you need to join the virtual desktop machine to the domain, even though this is effectively going to be a template, is to ensure that all the software components, DLL files, etc. that are needed on the machine for it to be domain joined are present on the image. Otherwise, when you create templates and new machines from this image and try to join them to the domain, the virtual desktop machines will possibly ask for the installation media to be inserted. While that's okay for one or two machines to go back and insert the media and join the domain, if it happens on thousands of machines that have been rolled out, then that's a whole new issue. So now with our image already built, what we're going to do is install VMware tools as our final part of the image build. So from the vSphere web client, we can click the install VMware tools button here, uh, and we get the prompt saying install VMware tools and that we want to mount the ISO image containing the VMware Tools installation to the virtual desktop. So if we now switch out to the virtual desktop machine and just make that full screen, we can see that the VMware Tools autoplay has already run. So we're going to click on Run Setup 64 to install the VMware Tools. Do you want this program to make changes? Yes. And now we can see the installation start. So, first screen we'll see is the Welcome to the Installation Wizard, in which we'll click the Next button. We're just going to go a typical installation on this particular image, so click Next, and then click the Install button. We'll now see VMware Tools being installed, we see the copying of the new files, installing services, and the main thing that VMware Tools installs is the drivers. So here we see VMX Net3 network driver, SCSI driver, mouse, video drivers. So these all enhance the performance of the virtual desktop machine, as does VMware Tools for any other virtual machine. So that's just completing the setup now. We click finish. Now because the network driver's loaded, we can see that the network screen has popped up. So all we're going to do here is we're going to restart VMware Tools and then reload the desktop.